congratulations on making your debut. Uh, two years ago, you basically just made your sort of debut for Stormers in that first URC season. You're now a Springbok. Can you just reflect on how quickly things have changed? Um, everybody's always had high hopes for you since under 20s, but also maybe coping with that expectation and, and sort of the, the journey you've had so far. Yeah, uh, it's been, it's, it's happened fast. I've had a few injuries, so there hasn't been a, I've lacked some game time, which has been frustrating. But on the other hand, uh, getting to understand the game on a deeper level, uh, analyzing, spending lots of time on my laptop, as uh, it's certainly helped. And and yeah, there is an expectation level that comes into being Sasha, I guess. But there's a lot of people that make Sasha. My my parents, my coaches, my friends, uh, my family. Yeah, my the guys back at the union at Stormers. I give a lot of credit to them because you know, as a youngster coming through the system, it's not easy, especially playing at inside centre, where uh, a lot of your players are usually experienced. So yeah, I've had a I've had a the fast two years, but but uh, it's been well accompanied by some strong people. So yeah. So Shane, you um, the, when you walked onto the field on Saturday, um, you look cool, calm, not like somebody playing in front of a at Twickenham in classic crowds. So there's some that kick. Uh, what went through your head, and how do you keep so calm? Um, yeah, those those sort of kicks. You know the. The thing is, we we work on that, and you get to understand your range and and the distance you can kick. So when you ask for the ball to take a kick, it's not supposed to be a gamble, you know. It's a, it's a trusting thing, and, and one thing they got right here at the Springboks is that they trust you. I uh, asked for that ball from Peter Steff, and he said, Slano, and I, and I kicked it over, you know. And I mentioned in the interview after the game that, that Tony Brown had helped me and, and my kicking coach at the Stormers. And, you know, like I said, all these things come into play, and, and when the kick comes, it's, it's another day of, of practice, and it just happens to be in front of a lot of people, which is what, you know, we all want to do, ex experience one day. Um, Sasha, you mentioned family and friends. Um, there was a very nice Twitter post with regard to your grandfather with the piece that Ronnie Castro's wrote about Barry Feinberg. Just talk us through that particular bit of history and what it means for you to be a Springbok, especially when you look at your grandfather's uh, very anti-apartheid past and some of the connotations the box had when you moved from the past into today. Yeah, my grandpa obviously played a huge role. You know, He was at the side of every rugby game. Uh, he passed end of last year. Don't want to get emotional. Um, yeah, he would have loved to see that. So that's everything he fought for. So yeah, proud. And then that you obviously having your dad there at the stadium on Saturday must have also been very special. Yeah, he made the he caught a flight on the Thursday, so got in on Friday. Had to go via Ethiopia or something crazy, so uh, he, he knew whatever he was going to do, he was going to get there. So, you know, that meant the most to me. I had my godfather there, um, uh, my mates from Cape Town were there. It was just, there was a full circle moment at the home of rugby in England. So I was, yeah, it was just so, such a special moment for me and to share it with them was, was awesome. So actually, have you spoken about working with Danny Williams and Mighty Buck, for example, for a storm that's yeah. camp now. You're working with likes of Tony Brown, Andre Polo. How important is it in these situations to become a bit of a sponge and to just try and take everything you can out of a squad that's got so many World Cup winners, double World Cup winners, and different sort of experiences? Yeah, like you said, sponge. Sponge mentality is me at the moment. Uh, I fully understand that I'm a new boy in the system, and I've got a lot of work to a lot of work to do, and a lot of things to fix. And you know, uh, with the with the people around me, I'm I'm certain that. You know, slowly but surely, I'll, I'll get that right. And, you know, even yesterday, just when we're kicking, watching Vili kick a ball, watch Andre kick a ball, you know, every sort of repetition these guys get, you, see, you pick up something. Um, whether it be Jesse in the warm-up or Andre kicking, so it's, a, it's an environment where there's a lot of learnings and uh, an invaluable experience. So, you know, I'm, like you said, I'm trying to just sponge as much in as possible. And you've also mentioned now, you know, you see yourself as a player, that's the sort of your favorite uh, position. Is it still your favorite? And is it maybe the responsibility that comes with it? Maybe that makes it so attractive. What is it about that particular position, <coughs> even though you can play at 10, 12, 15, that you enjoy so much? I love playing fly off, um, but I, I love just playing rugby. So 10, 12, 15, wherever it may be, I'm happy. But uh, personally, you know, a lot, of, a lot of time I spent in high school working on my game was on my kicking. And uh, personally, I feel like it's come through solidly. So at fly half, just being able to use my boots is probably the one part I enjoy and uh, trying to dictate the momentum of the game. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pressure that you want, uh, you know, where, where your team has to sort of look to you for direction and, and uh, game management. So that's, that's something I enjoy, but also at the same time, you know, getting, 
getting minutes on the park at any in any position is is amazing. Like I said, I've been I've had a few injuries, so I'm the last guy to be sort of you know determined to get one position. You know, any any time I can get minutes on the field, I'll take it, and I'll do what the boss says. So uh, just uh, when just everyone knows you as the rugby player, but um, I'm sure there's more to you than yeah. just the rugby player on the field. So what, what don't people know about you? What will they be surprised about finding out about you? Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. Just on that, I try to keep my my social media and that type of stuff rugby because um, that's what you guys kind of see me as. It's not beat around the bush there. My identity as a rugby player. Uh, but you know, I stay in the house with a few guys. Um, my fat, my my dad's around the corner. My brother's a phone call away. Uh, the backgammon boards on the table. Um, I keep myself occupied. You know, I love I love watching rugby. And I love spending time with my friends, but that's that's my life. And you know, to the general public and all these cameras, you know, it's a, I'm a rugby player, and, and I'll stick with my profession with that. Um, but yeah, Sash, I'm Sash to, to my mates, and Sasha Fine from Gomezuli to you guys. Yeah. I mean, Sasha, you, you 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 talk about how you play and, and your injuries in particular. How do you balance the need to be a skilled playmaker, game manager? but also not trying to temper on the physicality that makes you quite a unique rugby player. Yeah, that, that's important, you know. I, one thing in the game, I, I was on the floor once or twice and, you know, they say a trait of a good fly is that he's on his feet as much as possible. So, you know, striking that balance between getting involved and, and being on your feet and being able to sort of control the game, dictate the game is, is one thing in itself. So I guess that will come with experience, uh, just not being over eager. I mean, it's a, it's a packed crowd and you kind of just want to get stuck in, but matter of the fact is you actually just need to take a back seat and let the big boys do the work. So I think that's something that will come with time. Uh, Sasha, yes, um, Frank Smith, the coach of the Glasgow Warriors, is of the opinion that Loftus is the best stadium in the world. He says there's no win, you can kick because the ball flies. Yeah. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, if, if I get the opportunity, I'll, I'll, yeah, it's, a, it's one of the biggest tests we've had here for a while. So. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Loftus is, from a franchise level, it's a pretty intimidating ground. Um, and I've never experienced it as a South African player. But I'm sure, you know, based on what the Bulls supporters provide the Bulls, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be electric and, and a stadium that's going to really pump. Um, and, and off the tee, yeah, the Bulls are going to travel a few metres further. And I think they'll play into our advantage, especially with our strong kicking game. Uh, you can expect a lot from Andre or Marnie, whoever's going to, you know, myself, whoever to kick. Um, that ball's going to travel and, and we'll be able to put teams under pressure there. Speaking of intimidation, um, in particular, when you look at South African, the South African the Irish teams in particular have built quite a rivalry in the York team. We've mm. seen how feisty the games between Munster and Leinster and Stormers um, have been. We've also seen how they've turned out here. Yeah. Um, has that added an extra layer to the South Africa Ireland clash outside of what just transpired in the World Cup and post it? Yeah, I think so. We've, you know, we, we, it looks like we dislike each other, but I think there's a bittersweet relationship there because it's always a challenge. And at professional rugby, you want to challenge. You don't want to turn up and, and smoke teams. So, you know, what the Irish and the South Africans have provided for uh, each other as rugby teams and the supporters, you know, it's everything uh, the rugby community needs. And um, the Bulls, Leinster game, a tough game, a tight game, everything you want to see in rugby. Um, so, yeah, we'll just... I hope this, this this carries on for a long time, but I hope the green flag's on the right side there. Uh, so just uh, for a lot of young folks that follow you, that are inspired by your story, um, just obviously playing at international level is a bit of a much up. How would you describe it for them, how it's like that level? Yeah, uh, there's no days off here. Uh, literally the day off, you, you should still be anal uh, analyzing, um, you know, improving on your game. It's physically demanding, it's, it's mentally demanding, it's an intense environment. Uh, more so than franchise level, whilst franchise level is still very professional. Um, but like you said, it's a notch up. It's it's experienced heads, it's experienced coaches, it's uh, guys who take a, a big pride in their jobs. So um, that reciprocates onto the players, and and that's what's expected from you in this sort of environment. You know, to take your job seriously, and to do your job to the best of your uh, abilities. Awesome. Thank you, Sash. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.